I'm going to stop it there because they all do. And she continues on with a prayer for this nation. We all need to pray. I'm not standing up here to be your friend. I want you to know that until this nation and each and every one of us in this nation recognizes the humanity of each other, until black people learn to turn it out. What do I mean by turn it out? Some people say it means acting colored. That's not what turn it out means. When you see black pain influencing your life, stopping you from getting what you need, you need to tell them about it. Don't be afraid. Because every time you keep your mouth closed, you're causing another injury. Amen. Don't be afraid to say, do you understand why you don't see my pain? Mm. Do you understand how you have been taught that my pain doesn't matter? Do you understand why you don't hear me? Let me explain it to you. 200 years of this world, this nation telling you that I don't matter, well. that my body doesn't hurt, that the only good my body is is to dump everything America doesn't want into it has caused you not to see me hurt. Do you know that everybody who comes to this country wants to define themselves as far away from the domestic black as possible? <laughs> that makes them more American. When I say domestic black, I'm talking about the ones born in here. That no matter who you are, you feel that you are more American, you are more powerful, and you have more worth if you can define yourself away from black people. Not only that, but if you can kill one, you are super worthy. And that's what happened with uh, Bill Cosby's son. The man who killed him wasn't looking to kill Bill Cosby's son. He was looking to kill a black person so that he could earn the reputation of being American. He was from Russia. Okay, so I know I'm running out of town time, but I do have one more thing I'd like to talk about. And that is what she would, well, two things. One is knowledge is the power to change. What the mind doesn't understand, it worships or fears, and that's Alice Walker. How many of you know who Alice Walker is? Excellent. She's a mother of womanism, and I'm a womanist standing up here. I'm not there, this. I'm a womanist. That means I believe in the survival whole of all people. But we got to make sure people understand and have knowledge, and I think my sister, Pastor Savannah Hartman of Banner Church, Tampa, Florida, for telling the truth, no matter how much it hurt her. I want to talk a little bit about something in, in, in cultural theory that's called the law of the father. And the law of the father is the law of white male Americans, or white males, who determine value and worth. And we find black pain a cultural icon and metaphor appearing in all of our films where we see black bodies damaged, bruised, hurt, where we see pain stopping someone from attaining what they need to attain, or the black body is not allowed to be a powerful force because we have white saviors. Think about how many movies about black history have white saviors and the black body fades into the back. So I want, to, I want you to look at uh, a clip from Men of Honor. Carl Brashear, Brashear was the first amputee Navy diver and the first African American master diver in this country. And this film is about his life. He met such great racism he was threatened with death just to move him out of the way because the law of the father said that a black man could never be a Navy diver. And then later said that a black man uh, could never be um, 
a master diver. One man named Sunday in this film, probably Andrew Shears Lotter, um, saw more than Black Pain when he saw him, but he had to go through a lot of rejection. And I want to suggest that his rejection was because if you are of white nation mentality and ideology, you can never let the inheritance of America fall into a black man's hand. You will be seen as a traitor, a deserter of white nation. So in this clip, we see the traitor, the deserter, taking side with a black man whose father told him basically to do everything that you have to do to be successful. And so I'm showing this clip, and as you watch Carl Brashear, or the uh, Cuba Junior Jr. for training him, remember your own pain and the pain of your relatives and the pain of your patients, and know that they can overcome. They can walk through that pain. They can pursue everything that they want to in life. They can become all that God intended them to be. Sometimes they need a little Sunday. And that's what this character's name is. His name is Sunday. But they have to carry that pain. They have to make you see that pain. And they have to make you see them overcome it. Because they're strong. Those of us who survive middle passage, uh, we are endowed with great strength, great endurance. We are the ones who are going to bring black people into a powerful position in this country. And we have to acknowledge how we have been dismissed, disguised, and defeated by black pain. Can't hear it, can By the way, he has su suffered a leg injury, so he only has one leg. This gentleman represents white, white nation.
remember who he represents, White Nation. Watch the pain, not the power. That's what Hanks is saying. stop it right there. I, I'm running out of time. I know I'm out of time. Let me finish it. Sunday represents the white individual in a position of power and influence who sees the injustice of black pain and the injustice of what's being done to black people in this country and says no more. That person will be called a deserter. That person may find themselves weakened by the thing that they are using to strengthen others. But that person is valuable. Sunday, we have Hanks in this film who is representing white nation ideology. I wrote the book. I didn't tell you about it. I want everybody to see the pain. But if you heard that pain, so get yourself up. You don't need my help. I don't want you 
want you to really look at, this, at the sight of the wounding. What I've done to you. Carl Brashear represents how to defeat black pain. You hurt. Your hurts for you. You're stressed out because of what's happening into this, in this nation with your brothers and your sisters and you. But fight through it. You have power. You are the salvage expert. Go in. Pull it out. Build yourself and build others. Because what we need in this country is changed hearts and changed minds. Someday, experience a changed heart and a changed mind. We can have all the laws we want, but until the heart and the mind are changed, nothing will change. We are in this over 200 years now. Wow. We need to have some honest discussion. We need to have some apologies. But more than that, we need to have some changed behaviors. You can't force a changed heart and a changed mind. What I want to leave you with is your power. The strength that God gave you when your ancestors survived middle passage. You have it. I know it hurts. I hurt. But we can overcome. Thank you. I'm so glad that we had that uh, recorded. Uh, wow, you guys, thank you. Wow. Oh thank you. Thank you so much again. Uh, this is just, we're just uh, taking a break for lunch. We still have the afternoon to go. Um, we hope that you guys will be back. Lunch time is right now, but you know what? May I? Um, allow just a couple of questions. I know that it started five minutes to go to lunch, but if you don't mind me giving her uh, just another couple of minutes, are there any questions, um, uh, thoughts? Um, you know, she talked about changing minds and hearts. Um, that's most helpful for people who are advocating as well. I'll take two questions uh, geared towards um, uh, Dr. King. Sheila, and hold on, let me get you a, uh, if someone can give Sheila, hello, hello, I want to thank you. That was very powerful. Don't make me cry. First of all, I don't mind at all about crying. That's a passion for a lot. It was the most powerful and moving and on point. The way you read it through Black Bodies. The book that's currently out between the world and me. Brother Coach, he mentions that term, Black Bodies. And until I read that, I hadn't related all the pain, the injustice, the assaults, the killing, relating it simply to our bodies. My comment or my question is this. I must have your book. And I want to know if it's going to be available today. It will not. I did not bring it with me, but it is available. OK. Um, thank you. I will have some, and I'll bring it to the support group. OK? I'll bring them to the support group, to the Loma Linda one, to the Anno Valley one, to the LA one. Um, I'll get them from Dr. King, and I'll make sure that they get distributed. Okay? Yes. I do want to let you know that I updated this material to include Black Lives Matter movement. That's not in the book, but you see how it connects. 
Okay, second more time for one more question. And she'll be here for lunch, so um, seriously, talk to her. Go to your table. Um, again, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Again, uh, wow, I'm just blown away. But I wanted to know if you could just elaborate when we talk about changing hearts and minds and changing behaviors. Uh, maybe you could speak historically in regards to when we change behaviors using laws and things like that, but we don't change those hearts and minds and how that manifests itself in the behavior that we're still seeing today. Yeah. And I mean, we see it in everything. I mean, we have school integration, but we have students in schools who are ignored, who are tracked. Can you all believe I was somebody trying to track me in high school? Well, by that I mean, I had someone I was assigned to as my counselor. Now the law said that everything was integrated, so I had a white counselor. I went in there and she told me I needed to go to school to learn a trade. Mm -hmm. I got that too. Now I knew my mama was gonna whoop me. Mm -hmm. I somebody said, I was gonna spend it, I didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. what, he, what this advisor didn't know is that, you see, I had a color at the university, I mean at the, the high school. That's what we have to be for each other. This kind of cover was my mama's cousin, and she was the other counselor. So I went in there and I told her, <laughs> and I'm serious about my kind too. I can't go to college. I, I have to go and learn a trade. She said, you do that. She said, you have to see right there. I'll be right back. I don't know what she said in that other office. But I was told when she came back down, sweetheart, you go on in there and talk again. When I got in there, this woman said, I was looking at the wrong file. <laughs> you need to go to college. In fact, I think you might get a PhD one day. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> All right. Um, this has been off. this has been awesome, wonderful. Need to make a, one more. I just need to make one announcement. We have the Get Connected person to register folks for Get Connected. How many people have sickle cell disease here? If you have not registered to Get Connected or want more information, can you please see Maria? She's here. Hi, Marina. Hi, everyone. And so she's the new CHW for Kanye and Wellness Center. See her, please. Otherwise, she's just going to start asking everybody, have you registered? Have you registered? Have you registered? So see her, please. Enjoy your lunch. Sickle cell training as well. Yeah, so we want to uh, know who has sickle cell training just to write down your information. Um, so that because we're collaborating with what's the what's the count with Veron. Uh, so again, during lunch, we're going to be back here at uh, two promptly so that we can begin. Um, and we'll see you guys then. Thank you so much. Thank you.